Welcome, everybody. Welcome, 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 Awu Wale, Amoboland Lake Victoria. Welcome, Aziz Olawe Waji Brani. Welcome, Saleh Muhammad. Welcome, Olatun Jiyo Motolani. Welcome, Freeman. You're welcome. Please, if you can hear me, and um, if you can hear me, or if you're having any, okay, if you can hear me, at least just um, send a message, send me a message on the chat. Sir. Just leave a message in the chat box if you can hear me. And um, okay, we can hear you. Okay, thank you so much. And then, if you're having any issues or anything regarding connection, I know, please let me know. Okay, loud and clear. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Aziz Walayoaju, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good, e good evening, sir. Oh, we can hear you. Yeah. Should we should continue, we should wait for others. We have seven participants on the group. Okay, let me find out from, um, okay, just a moment, please. Okay.
Good evening, everybody. Please, we can hear me. Please just signify. Okay. Good evening, everybody, once again. Just our day was good. And I believe you all are ready for tonight. And I want to celebrate how you that joined yesterday. I hope you've started working on your vision. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, I welcome all my teammates. I welcome Pastor Sunji, our, our leader. You are welcome, sir. Please let us all introduce ourselves through the chat pause. Please let us all introduce ourselves. I think we have new, new people here. Okay. My name is Awuwole Omobolale, and I'll be the anchor for tonight. Please let us all introduce ourselves. Let us know ourselves, please. Please, can you hear me? Please let us introduce ourselves. Okay, Richard Ola Inka, you are welcome. Who will I be somewhere? As this Ola reward you, you are welcome. Busayo, you are welcome. Ola Tsunji Omotolani, you are welcome. Okay, welcome in it. Charles, you are welcome. These are the joining. Just type your name to this yourself. Okay, thanks to all. Okay, Pastor Tunji, you are welcome, sir. We celebrate you. Okay, yesterday night was amazing. Talk about vision casting and i believe we all have our vision some of you that are still afraid of your vision i hope your your thought have changed towards it yesterday was very 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 awesome please i would love two or three people to omit themselves to just summarize what they learned or what stayed with them yesterday about yesterday's section please 
before we pray and move to today's section. Please, I need two mm -hmm. or hey, three. My name is Pesayo Lawrence. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. I was part of the session yesterday, and um, for me, it was mind blowing. And of course, I I was actually tempted to unmute my mic and then you know turn on my video and just scream. Um, at um that's um Pastor Daniel. I think, oh, finally, I can actually see you because I was so glad to see him. And then also, I was I was really blessed by um the things he taught yesterday. So the things that actually you know got to me, the, the first statement is um. Um, your vision must be actualized first within before you start to pursue it without. I'm paraphrasing now. You didn't actually put it that way, but it's something like that. That means I must, first of all, capture the vision within, then, of course, see it as a reality within before I start to pursue it without. Now, then, I think it was that, then it was trying to explain the um, disappointment and discouragement within the vision that a lot of people start their vision a lot of people start their vision and they do not conclude it. And the reason is simply because when they when they have not actually seen the future, they've not seen, they've not, please uh, give me a moment. Okay, sir. Network issues, can you hear me? Yes, sir, can, can you hear, hear you? Oh, okay, yes. okay. So you need to achieve, you need to um, um, see the vision as a reality within before you begin to pursue it without. That way, disappointment and discouragement, which are actually inevitable along the way, will not they will not hold you back. They will not stop you from actualizing your vision. Then the second thing that is said that for me really caught my attention is the fact that um, he said you can't teach when you are still learning. For me, it seemed simple, <laughs> but it's very, very serious. Like it's always I I because I noticed that um it's very easy for us to you know you want to put yourself out there as much as it it's very important to put yourself out there start to talk about for example let's say I'm a digital marketer I want to start talking about digital marketing but I don't know anything about digital marketing eventually it will show that yeah this one is just a quack it doesn't know anything about digital marketing but I was actually talking about the fact that see he said dig your roots first get to learn a lot yet and let what you're learning let it become a, your life before you start to teach it and then in fact i think this scripture comes to mind immediately in act and chapter one verse one which is um the former things that i wrote to you Theophilus, about the things that jesus began first to do then to teach so he for me it was really really serious that i have to first sit down make sure that what i'm learning i've internalized and I'm already working in it before I begin to teach. Then the last thing which I'll share, I, I, there are several things that I, I can share, but I'll just share these three points. The last one is there is a flight going into the future. You said that. Okay, I need to mute someone. Excuse me. Yes, okay. Sorry, I had to mute someone. Okay, it says um, there is a flight going into the future. Vision is the fuel. There is a flight going into the future. Vision is the fuel. For me, that's so, so very, very important. That means if I don't, if there is no vision, if I don't have vision for my life, <laughs> uh, whatever future one is, all, all one will have will just be wishing. You will just be wishing to have it. For example, you wake up in the morning, I just, I wish I could become this. I wish I could become that. Vision is that fuel that carries you into the future. So, if you are not going to, if you are, if you get on the flight, for example, and you want to make it to your destination, you must ensure that you have vision as your fuel. If you if you are if you are bereft of vision, you will never be able to get to your destination the moment you take off. So basically, that's what I want to share. So I don't take up all our time because there's so many. I would love to share a lot of things, but I'll just stop there. Thank you so much. I hope I've communicated what I learned yesterday. Yes, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh... Thank you. Any other person? Any other person? Please, one more person to go. Please share with us what you learned yesterday about vision casting. 
Okay, since there is no other person, okay, I would love to share what I was able to pick yesterday. Firstly, it said, uh, Pastor Daniel said, a man that is visionless is a man that did not have. Hello. Okay. Hello, please, can I speak? Yes, ma. All right, my name is Peculia. I'm, I'm joining from Bauchi. Okay, so welcome. from yesterday, thank you, ma. From yesterday, I learned that, I think one thing that really stood out for me from yesterday's session is that God's vision must be my ambition. So I shouldn't just go about chasing anything that I, that I, feel, um, that I feel like is right in my own sight. I must ensure that what I'm chasing or what I've and what I've embraced as my ambition is God's vision. Another thing that stood out for me was that destiny demands diligence. It demands my commitment. It demands my determination. It's not something that I just sit back and expect destiny to fulfill itself. No, destiny demands my diligence. And I must be able to know that when my vision is heavy, it demands a lot on me, which are what's demanding in exactly P. Daniel's words. He says, when your vision is heavy, it demands a lot on you, which are actually what's demanding. So I actually learned a lot. I learned a lot. But a major key takeaway from, for me was that God's vision must be my ambition. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other person that would love to share what he or she learned yesterday? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Yes, my name is Ayojide Bitoye from Lauren. Yeah, welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So what stood out for me yesterday is the word pronounced by Peter Nair that you don't teach why you are learning. So he said we should be prepared and ensure that our gift is refined before we begin to launch out. So... As a fishing carrier, I should be the one to be well prepared, committed first. So I should show commitment first. If I show commitment first, others will also join. And the level of my commitment will determine what the commitment of others will be. So that word that I pronounced yesterday, that you don't teach while learning, actually stood out for me. And I'm really blessed. There are so many things that touched me yesterday. So I thank God for yes, yesterday's section. I thank God for Pete Daniel, and I thank God for the organizers of this program. I pray for grace for them to do more in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank, thank, thank you so you, much. Man. Thank you, everybody, for hearing what you learned yesterday. And our speaker for tonight is on board. Okay, yesterday, let me just, yesterday, Peter Nem spoke about principles of vision, enemies of great visions. I think a lot, one, uh, I would just mention two enemies of great vision. He spoke about discouragement, disappointment, and he said something about discouragement that stayed, said, discouragement clashes our dream. Please let us all stay out of discouragement. Anytime we all have our vision, I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Please let us pray, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for another time to learn. Lord, we pray that you enlighten our understanding in the name of Jesus. At the end of it all, we are focused to glorify. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Okay. Good evening again to those that are just joining. My name is Awoli Omobolali. Um, presently in Inquire State in Lori, and I'll be your anchor for tonight. Okay, I believe you are all ready for tonight's section. If you are ready, I want you to type in the in the chat board that I am ready for tonight. And if you uh, if some of your friends joined yesterday and they are not here, kindly enter their DM now, tell them that it is time to learn, to unlearn and to relearn again. Just type, I am ready in the comments, boss. Thank you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I need five more people to say, I am ready for it to continue.
okay, tonight, the course we've taken tonight is on self-leadership. And I would love to read the profile of our speaker. Uh, can you all hear me? Okay, our speaker for tonight, his name is Joshua Boa. He's a delicate follower of Christ, embracing and upholding his principle in all aspects of his life. He is a loving husband and a proud father of two girls. Joshua is passionate for education and research is evident through his role as a teacher. Joshua is a researcher, is committed to impart knowledge and contribute to the academic community. I believe with this, this we've heard about Joshua, but I think we are all ready to learn. Please, are we all with our writing materials and a art? to be an exceptional leader in all areas or in any field you find of ourselves, please with a clapping ovation in our comment box, please, by using emoji. This I want us to welcome our speaker tonight. I'm not seeing our emojis, people of God. I'm not seeing our emojis. I think so. Some people are not excited. Okay. Mr. Joshua, we welcome you. Over to you, sir. We are happy to have you here, sir. Mic, sir. You're muted, sir. You need to mute your mic, sir. Okay. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Am I sir. Audible now? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, you are, sir. All right. Thank you so much. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here this hour and to be a part of this vision that was actually vetted by the convener of this 2023 basic leadership course in person of PCA, Pastor Tunji Adeboejo. I want to celebrate him for his commitment and dedication to leadership over the years. He is someone whom I have known and listened to for quite a while now. I have sat several under his ministration and for every time I had the privilege to listen to him, it has always been a wow moment and lots and lots of lessons to draw from both his wealth of knowledge and practical application of leadership. PTA is somebody who is passionate about leadership. He is, it is one thing that he is stand out for and that he is known for when it comes to do with the issue of, when it has to do with the issue of leadership, I beg your pardon. And more importantly, his passion is driven towards the younger generation. And of course, that gives hope to, to the young generation and a hope to the future that there is possibility to actually raise the right set of leaders who indeed will impact their generation and live differently from the way others have lived in terms of leadership. I would like to also appreciate my friend and brother in person of Pastor Omola B. I especially want to thank you. He's one of the, 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 the backroom team behind this particular basic leadership course. And I also like to appreciate every other member of the team and our anchor for tonight, Omobolanle. I want to thank you for setting the right tune for this ride tonight. I believe you 
can still hear me clearly, please, if you can, can you just give me a kind of response or sign to help me know that I'm not speaking to myself? Hello, can, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. All yes, right, sir. thank you. All right, thank you very much. I could see responses from the chat, from the chat box, and as well people who could actually speak up and to confirm that I am clear and loud enough. All right, tonight I'll be speaking on self leadership, self leadership, and I'll be approaching this topic in a lecture format. I'll approach it in a lecture format and I would like to start by dishing out the, the, course, the course content for self-leadership. It will entail just six basic aspects which has to do with, we'll have a bit of introduction to self-leadership. We'll also look at what is self what self-leadership is all about, and then who is a self-leader, and then the motiv motivation behind self-leadership, the essence of self-leadership, and last but not the least, which is the requirement for self-leadership. So these six basic points will be our, our outline through which we'll be interacting tonight. And I would like to start from the introduction by way of wetting our appetites to what we'll be learning tonight by saying that self, to understand self-leadership, it is imperative to know that self-leadership is simply put leading yourself successfully. Leading yourself successfully is a simplified way of representing what this subject of discussion tonight is all about, self-leadership. And it is an essential foundation for all other levels and forms of leadership. It is also a leadership that helps you to understand what leadership is all about and the kind of leader you will become. It also entails details that makes a self-leader. These are just the preamble of what we'll be interacting on tonight. Now, progressing onto the first outline, which is what is self-leadership? Because it's important for us to understand what self-leadership is so that we can better appreciate its impact in our life and its relevance. Self-leadership is leading yourself successful enough to become a blueprint for other leaders. leaders. I take that again. Self-leadership is leading yourself successful enough to become a blueprint for other leaders. Because you can only lead a system or people to as far as you have been. You can only lead yourself, a people or system to as far as you have been. You cannot successfully lead others to where you have not been to. You can lead others to where you have not been to. This implies that where you have been to, either mentally, physically, or spiritually, is the height that you can take others to as well. Those whom you lead will only be as high as you have been. This is what makes self-leadership very, very important. Your followers will only go as far or go as high as you have been as a leader. This is why it is important to understand this concept of self-leadership. Self-leadership also creates the divide between successful leaders and failed leaders because of this is the basic form this is one among the basic form of leadership. And that is why this training is titled Basic Leadership Course. And self-leadership is 
the leadership that creates the divide between leaders who are successful and those who fail. And this is why we will notice, if we are careful to observe, that most successful coaches of the world are those who were once players in the area of sport they lead. For those of us who are inclined to, to sports, we will, of course, notice that globally, most successful coaches are those who were once players in that areas of sports that they lead. And that is why it is always rare or uncommon to see any successful basketballer lead a successful football team. So also you will hardly see any successful footballer who will successfully lead a boxer to become a world boxing champion. So also a box, a successful boxer will really find it difficult to lead an athlete to an Olympic gold medalist. So this is why self-leadership is important and it has to do with leading yourself to be successful and then you become a blueprint for other leaders to follow. So in summary, on this aspect of what self-leadership is all about is that you, you, successful, you, you are successfully leading you. In summary, in, or in another term, you can say self-leadership is you successfully leading you. You can also term it to be that you are the first leader of yourself. This is what self-leadership is centered around. You are the first leader of yourself. And you are also the first experiment of your leadership. You are the first experiment of your leadership. So how you lead yourself is very, very important because it will affect both yourself and those whom you lead. This is why it is crucial to understand this subject of self-leadership. Now, moving on to the second the third aspect of the course outline is who is a self-leader? Who is a self-leader? According to historic accounts from scripture, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, everything was created by God to grow and to produce after its kind. Everything created by God was designed to grow and then to produce after its kind. What does it mean to produce after its kind? Is to produce its type, its similitude, its form, its shape, and etc. God is the greatest self-leader. And I believe the Bible is the greatest self-leading manual any leader can ever have because of it talks about the greatest leader that ever that is in existence. And this is the reason why God as a self-leader does not need improvement. God does not need advancement. God does not grow. Neither does God evolve. But every other thing that is created needs to grow and also needs to reproduce after its kind. And that process of growth and reproducing after your kind is referred to as self-leadership. Every successful global leader we know today went through this process of self-leadership. Think of any global leader you know, either past or present. They went through the process of self-leadership. It's a process that no successful leader can skip, no aspiring leader can skip. If you think about people like Nelson Mandela, you talk about people like Steve Jobs, the Jack Ma, Jeff Bezos, M.K. Gandhi, you talk about Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln, you talk about the Bill Gates, the Zuckerbergs, you talk about the Mike Monroe, John C. Maxwell, you talk about Ia Deboe, when you talk about the Sheikh Mohammed of Dubai, you talk about Billy Gar
Okay. Okay. If we can't hear him, it's most likely his network. Please let's just turn the patient. Priscilla Ibrahim, yes. It, I think um, our speaker is now offline. Hello. Okay, he's back online now. It's network. Yes, hello, sir. We can hear you, sir. All right. Sorry for the break in transmission. It's actually the network issue. All right. I was talking about self leaders and making reference to global leaders who have actually made impact and lived impactfully, and those who are still living today and making waves in the area of leadership. And I said that all of these individuals, they went through the process of self-leadership. They let themselves successful enough to become a blueprint for other leaders. And that is why today, a lot of us as young people look at the life these people lived or they are living and we aspire to be like them because of the successfully underwent through this process of self-leadership. And I'm trying to establish the fact that one of the reasons why these leaders were able to successfully go through this process of self-leadership is because of one basic thing, which is they discovered their life purpose. They discovered their life purpose because of you will always grow into a particular and unique form according to your life purpose. And that is why we have leaders in various spheres of life. We have leaders in the entertainment, in the arts, leaders in the IT world. We have leaders in the religious world, in the political world, in these various aspects of life. We have different leaders that have become model for us to also tread after similar paths. Why? Because of these leaders discovered their life purpose. And this is why it is often said that like begets like. You will only reproduce what you are. And I would like to further add a definition to whom a self-leader is. A self-leader is anyone who has discovered his or her essence of existence and has made a firm decision to see to its actualization within life allocated time. A self-leader, I repeat again, is anyone who has discovered his or her ex essence of existence and has made a firm decision to see to actual actualization within life allocated time. That is to say that you don't have all the time in the world. You don't have all the time in the world. And that is why it is important to discover what is your life purpose. What is your life purpose? Discovery of your life purpose will form the shape and the form of leader that you will become. You don't have all the time in the world. A time well spent is a time invested purposefully. Every time you spend well is a time that is channeled purposefully. And every time that is wasted is a time that is spent on purposelessness. And this is why as a, an aspiring leader, you need to discover first and foremost, what is your life purpose? Because of this, we inform the area of leadership that you will offer to your generation or to a group of people. The most important need of a self-leader is discovering your life purpose. The most important need of a, of a self-leader is discovering your life purpose. Self-leader is a purpose-driven leadership that always asks why, understand why, before venturing into anything. Self-leader is a purpose-driven leadership that always asks why, 
understands why before venturing into anything. So it is always important for every leader who, who, is, who wants to be a successful self leader to always understand, to always ask why, understand why before venturing into anything. The abuse of several lives and potential today stems from the ignorance of purpose. It stems from the ignorance of purpose. A self-leader who has discovered purpose becomes self-demanding, becomes self-demanding. And that is why it is popularly said, as quoted by late Miles Moreau, that when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. But a leader who understands the concept of self-leadership is a leader who always makes a demand of himself. Such leader does not accept status quo. Such leader always demands improvement. Such leader always demands growth, always demands progress, always demands upliftment, always demands expansion, always demands excellence, and above all, demands the best. These are the attributes of a self-leader. So great leaders are those who have successfully led themselves in pursuit of their purpose fulfillment. I'm trying to give us a summary of this particular content, this aspect of the content I just shared with us on who is a self-leader. Self, great leaders are those who have successfully led themselves in pursuit of purpose fulfillment. A successful self-leader will inadvertently maximize positional leadership and titles. Everyone who has successfully led themselves, they are the few who always maximize positional leadership and leadership that comes with titles. And this is why, according to John C. Maxwell, he gave a five ladders or levels of leadership that has to do with the positional leadership, talk about the permission leadership, the production leader, and then the people development leader and the personhood leader. So a leader who has successfully led himself will inadvertently maximize the positional leader, will maximize the permission leader leadership, he will also maximize the production leadership and also the the people development leadership and as well the personhood leadership. The abuse of position, office, and titles is symptomatic of failed leadership. Every time you see abuse of position, office, it is just a symptom that such a person has failed in the area of self leadership. And that is why it is crucial and important for you to understand this concept of self-leadership. Now, what is the motivation behind self-leadership? What is the motivation behind self-leadership? Please, can you guys hear me clearly? Can, we can hear you loud and clear, sir. All right, thank you very yes, much. Yes, we can hear you. All right, thank you for the affirmation. So what is the motivation behind self-leadership? A self-leader is not someone who is just self-centered or self-focused or self-conscious alone, but is one who is demanding itself to become the solution for others. A self-leader is not one who is just self-centered or self-focused or self-conscious alone, is one who demands of itself to be the solution for others. And that is why if you are careful to observe or to know, you will discover that there are two basic components of purpose. For every purpose, you will discover these two basic components in that purpose. You will discover one, a problem, and two, solution. These two important components, they are always present in every purpose. One, Problem to solution. These are the two basic components of every purpose. And this is why a self-leader 
needs to discover that area of problem he or she is designed to solve and then also discover the solution to that particular problem. This is what makes leadership. To be successful in self-leadership, you must find motivation from both success and failure. To be a successful self-leader, you must find motivation from both success and failure. Success in this case implies that you need to understand the impact of the good, your purpose fulfillment will do to yourself and to others. The success in this case has to do with you understanding what good will the impact of discovering your purpose do to yourself and to others whom you are leading or will lead in the future. While the failure here has to do with you understanding also the negative impact of not fulfilling your purpose will do to yourself and to others whom you are supposed to lead. These two components are very important for self-leadership because these two put together brings about what is called consequence. What is called consequence. And this forms an internal motivation for a self-leader. So these two factors of success and failure, as well as their implication on yourself and those whom you will lead, they are great motivation for self-leadership. And the absence of this understanding will cause you not to appreciate the demand of self-leadership. When you don't understand the consequence of your success or failure, you will not appreciate the demand of self-leadership. So in summary, on the motivation of self-leadership, you need greater internal motivation than external to actualize self-leadership. You need greater internal motivation, motivation within you that is greater than the external for you to actualize self-leadership. And the component of this motivation is both success and failure. Are we together? So what is the essence of self-leadership? The essence of self-leadership primarily is to discover your purpose and fulfill it. That is the primary essence of self-leadership, discovering your purpose and then pursuing its fulfillment. Self-leadership predetermines your success or failure in each level of leadership as postulated by John C. Maxwell. Self-leadership, it predetermines your success or failure on each of those levels of leadership, which I have mentioned earlier, the positional, the permissive, the, the production, the people development, and the personhood level of leadership. Self-leadership is also where your life ideology is precipitated and impressed. In self-leadership, that is where your life ideology is precipitated and impressed. And what do I mean by this? It simply has to do with your view of life, your view of people, your principles, boundaries, your positions on issues of life. And it also determines what you say yes to and no to. All of this you will discover in the place of self-leadership. What you say yes to, what you say no to. Your view about life, your view about people, how you set boundaries around you. Self-leadership is your preparation chamber. It's also your preparation chamber. Whatever you fail in the secret, you will most likely fail in the open. So it is a place where you are prepared for leadership, for greater height or level of leadership. It is in self-leadership you are equipped and Prepare. So it's a preparation chamber. And that is why I said, whatever you fail in the secret, you will most likely fail in the open. So self leadership is for excellent self development. It is through self leadership you develop yourself 
excellently. Now, what are the requirements for self-leadership, which is the next aspect of our content of interaction? What are the requirements of quality choice is one requirement for self-leadership. Self-leadership hinges on choices. Self-leadership hinges on choices. Life is driven by time, but it is configured by choices. We live within an allocated time on the earth. And that is why I said life is driven by time, but it is configured by choices. It lives with vast of options. If you can't hear, if you can't hear in its, it's a network, you will return very soon, I, I believe. Please let's just um, hold on. It's just his network and return shortly. Thank you. All right. Sorry for the breaking transmission. All right, please. Did we get the point on quality choice I just stated earlier? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Life is driven by choice, and life is driven by time, but it is configured by choices. All right. Thank you very much. And I also added by saying that every day we live comes with a vast array of options from which you pick from by informed or uninformed decision. Every day you live your life, you are making informed or uninformed decision, which has to do with your choice. And this choice will inadvertently affect the kind of self-leader you will become. It will affect your leadership. Now, I'm moving on to the second requirement for self-leadership is the discovery of your life purpose, which is one of the primary essence of self-leadership, discovering why you exist discovering why you are living, discovering why you exist. It is an important requirement for self-leadership because of if there is nothing you are living for, there will be no motivation for life. So the discovery of your life purpose is one essential requirement for self-leadership. And like I said earlier, we do not have the luxury of time. That is time on earth. So your purpose is not discovered by looking inward or outward, but by looking Godward. I take that again. That's to discover your life purpose. You don't look inward or outward. You look Godward because you were created. And it is the creator that can give you the accurate and precise reason why you were created. Purpose discovery will fashion how you lead, who you lead, and where you lead. I take it again that the discovery of your purpose, it will fashion how you lead, who you lead, and where you lead. So that is why the discovery of your life purpose as it has to do with self-leadership, is very crucial. The third point that is, that, that is required for self-leadership is vision, vision, which is what was discussed yesterday. And I would like to use this opportunity to, to appreciate our speaker yesterday. He really gave us an in-depth, and clear understanding of what vision is all about in person of Pastor Daniel Olawande. And so what is vision? He said something about vision as being the mental picture you conceptualize of your future. 
the mental picture you conceptualize of your future. And I go further to add that vision is what you see about yourself how you see yourself and where you see yourself. Vision is what you see about yourself. How you see yourself and where you see yourself. This is what vision is centered around. What do you see about yourself? How do you see yourself and where do you see yourself? So the fourth requirement for self leadership is inquisition inquisition what is inquisition inquisition simply put is the quest to know is the quest to know Creators will be patient. He's having issues with his network. Hello. Yes, sir. You're welcome, man. Yes, we can hear you, sir. All right. Thank you. So I was saying something about inquisition, that inquisition is the quest to know, asking and making inquiry, and that inquisition is the transmission cable of knowledge, just the same way we have the electricity transmission cables that power that supplies power from one location to the other to the other so also inquisition serves as a transmission cable for knowledge this is why great leaders are usually those with inquisitive mindset why because of they don't accept status quo they don't accept status quo this is why an inquisitive mindset is usually powerful now, inquisition gives you the extra. Inquisition gives you the extra. And let me use this analogy to explain this particular statement by saying that those of us who usually eat in restaurants, either regular or once in a while, we agree with me that there is something that that extra plate does. There is an edge that an extra plate gives you every time you have a need for it. And this is what inquisition serves to do. Inquisition provides the extra. There is an edge that comes with extra. And this is what inquisition provides. And in Matthew 25, we see that and the impact of extra, what it did to 10 virgins, how they were categorized into wise and foolish based on the availability of extra. And this is what inquisition serves to do. It gives you the extra. And from my experience as a teacher, I have discovered that 
I have discovered All right, I could see someone on the chat section saying that he is lost at the point of inquisition. Please, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, all you right. can hear let me quickly. All right, let me go quickly on that part of inquisition. I said that inquisition is All right, apologies for this network flick. All right, so inquisition gives you the extra. And I made mention of an analogy of making an ex a demand for extra plates every time you visit the restaurant or in your family setting, that there is an edge the extra gives to you. And we seen that even from biblical accounts in Matthew 25, that 10 virgins were categorized into wise and foolish based on extra. And this extra, I said, is what inquisition makes available to you. And this is why it is those who go the extra mile that are usually the successful leaders. And I also want to establish that from my experience as a teacher, that every time no question is asked at the end of every lecture, the extra is usually lost and sometimes become the pain of the student's future because of nobody is willing to ask any question. No inquisitive mind is trying to throw out a question out there. And in, in not doing so, there are certain information where the students are inquisitive actually pull out the the kind of questions such a lecturer will like we will want to set in the course of an assessment or examination and this is why inquisition is very important for self-leadership I will move on to the six, on to the fifth point on the requirement for self leadership, which is thinking, which is thinking. As a self leader, you need to think. We live in a generation where people don't think. It's as though their mind is hibernated. All they just do is they want some someone somewhere to tell them what to do, how to do it. This will not help you to be a successful self-leader or leader in other levels of sphere. To be a successful self-leader, you must be good at thinking. You must be good at thinking. I am not talking about worry. I'm talking about thinking. It is an important requirement for successful self-leadership. Thinking is observing, re-evaluating, re-examining and stretching of your mind to grab something. Thinking is you observing, re-evaluating, re-examining, and stretching your mind in order to grab something. Thinking is your, thinking is the link. Thinking is the link between your present and your future. Thinking is what links your present to your future. Thinking is also going deeper than the surface of an idea. Thinking takes you deeper than the surface of an idea. 
thinking is also the incubator of innovations. Most great inventors of the world today, they are great thinkers. They are great thinkers. And I read of the story of Bill Gates, how that he was in his room and then under his bed, isolated, and his mother was in search for him for several hours. And she kept on calling his name, Bill, Bill, Bill. And then when she came into his room and then she found him under his bed, you know, just meditating and thinking, he, he, she, as soon as she called his name, Bill, that she has been looking for him, his response to her was that, mom, don't you think, don't you think that he is thinking, that he is thinking. And today we see the result of what he's thinking is doing to the world. Today we have the micro Microsoft. We have what we call the Windows. He is the brain behind it. And it is as a result of thinking. And this is why it is important. If you will be a successful self-leader, you need to think. You need to think. And that is why you are always re required to think outside the box. They tell you sometimes, break the box. Think outside the box. Why? And draw something that is beyond the surface. Now, the next point I want to make mention of on the requirement of self-leadership is discipline. Is discipline. Discipline is an important requirement for self-leadership. Simply put, discipline is discovering your life priorities and sticking to it despite all other options calling for your attention. Discipline is discovering your life priorities and sticking to it despite all other options calling for your attention. Discipline helps you to define what is a priority to you or what are your priorities. Your priorities reveals your discipline. Your priorities will reveal your discipline. And this is why an entertainer does not live the same way an aspiring physician lives. This is the reason why the lifestyle of a businessman is not the same with an athlete. It is because of their purpose require or demand of the kind or set of discipline. Now, I said earlier that your priorities reveal your discipline. Now, your ability to prioritize is a cure for confusion. A lot of times, the reason why people are confused is because of life will always present you with a pack of options, both the good, the bad, and the ugly. Life will present them to you. And most of times, we are usually confused, not knowing which to pick or which to take or where to look at. It is because you do not understand this concept of priorities. So ability to prioritize is a cure for confusion. Priority helps you identify your needs from your wants. It helps you to identify what you need, separate it from what you want. Every leadership form and level has a required dosage of discipline to be successful. For every leadership level, leadership type or form, there is a prerequisite dosage of discipline that is required to be successful. And that is why I said earlier that the discipline of an athlete is different from a businessman. The discipline of an entertainer is different from one who is a physician. What do you need to discipline? What do you need to discipline? I want to mention three important things that you need to discipline or you need discipline on. Number one is your appetite. Number one is your appetite. Simplify your tongue. You need to have discipline on your appetite, which has, which has a correlation with your tongue. Number two, you need to have discipline on your appeal, your appeal, which has a correlation with your sight, your eyes. You need to have discipline with your access, 
which have a correlation with your ears. These are three important areas to have discipline on to be a successful self-leader. Now, the next requirement of self-leadership is sacrifice, is sacrifice. Sacrifice, simply put, is the cost to be a successful self-leader. Sacrifice has to do with cost demand, cost requirement. To be successful in self-leadership, you must sacrifice both legitimate and illegitimate needs. I take that again. To be successful in self-leadership, you must sacrifice both legitimate and illegitimate needs. What are your legitimate needs? Sleep is one of your legitimate needs. You need food. You need rest. You need clothing. You need comfort. All of these are legitimate needs of every human being. And these are the things we aspire to have in life. You want rest. You want comfort. You want food. You want clothing. And you also want time. You need time. These are legitimate needs. But in order to become a successful self leader, you will need to sacrifice some of these. You will need to sacrifice your sleep. You will need to sacrifice what you eat. This is why, as an aspiring leader or one who wants to be a leader in the future, you need to have. You need to understand that sometimes in order for you to get your goal or achieve your goal, it will cost you your sleep, it will cost you your rest, it will cost you your comfort, and it will cost you your time. All of these are areas of sacrifice you must make. While your illegitimate needs that you need to sacrifice are things such as entertainment, catching of fun, hangouts, social media, watching of movies and the TV screen. A lot of people want to be great, but they stick on the TV screen for long hours. Long hours they are on the TV screen. Yes, they are aspiring to be successful leaders. It will not happen that way. So these are the things that successful self-leadership will cost you. So these are the things you will need to sacrifice. And under this aspect of sacrifice is the fact that to be a successful self-leader, you must also know what not to sacrifice. You must also know what you shouldn't sacrifice. What are the things you shouldn't sacrifice? Your values and your character. Your values and your character shouldn't be sacrifice if you want to be a successful self-leader. And this is what puts a balance on the things to sacrifice and the things not to sacrifice to be a successful self-leader. I move on to the next point, which has to do with being an incurable learner. Being an incurable learner. This is the eighth point. To be a successful self-leader, to be successful in self-leader, leadership, you need to be an incurable learner. Learner, uh, learners are masters of the future. Learners are masters of the future. Learning to lead guarantees a place for you in leadership. When you are learning to lead, it always guarantees a place for you in leadership. Those who are learning today, they will inadvertently become the leaders of tomorrow. They will lead those who fail to learn. So learn from leaders who succeed and those who fail. Remember, I told us those are two important motivation for self-leadership. Learning from those who have failed and those who have succeeded. Because of every leader is either a pathfinder or a pace setter. Every leader is either a pathfinder or a pace setter. A pathfinder is that you are following or trying to discover the path which other leaders who have gone ahead of you followed in order to be successful. While a pace setter is one who creates a virgin path for others to follow. And remember my earlier statement when I define what a self-leader is, is someone who becomes a successful 
leader and provide a blueprint for other leader to follow. So this will make you a pace setter when you live successfully in the area of self leadership. Now to the last point for tonight, for the sake of time, is humility. Humility, an essential requirement for self leadership is humility. Humility is like a pillar in the form of a spring. Humility is like a pillar. I liken humility as a pillar in the form of a spring. You know what a spring is. Those of you who went to, to, to boarding school, those days, our beds are usually made in the, with, with ions in the form of spring. These ions, they can always stretch and they can always compress. And I see humility like that form of spring that it can always stretch you upward and it can always compress downward. So humility is like that pillar. So when you walk and live humble, humility will expand. The sense of humility is complete to bring you low. I, I, I hope you get this particular analogy. I used to explain the concept of humility in the area of self-leadership that it expands and it compresses. To those who are humble, humility will expand to take them up. But those who reject the way of humility and choose the opposite, which is pride, it will compress them downward. Now, humility is also a magnet that attracts people to you. Humility is a magnet that attracts people to you. Why does it attract people to you? It's because of when people discover that you are a self-leader who is humble, they will be comfortable around you. They will be comfortable around you. Secondly, they will be able to see their relevance in your life because of you will be humble enough to open up to them. So for them to realize that they have a role to play in your life. This is why humility attracts, is an attraction is a force of attraction. It attracts followers. And this is why, unfortunately, in our climb, people during political leaders, during the time of elections, they tend to act force humility. They pretend to be, to, be, to be humble because of they understand the impact of this concept of humility. It has a way of attracting followers. So it is important that you stay humble as a self-leader. And then thirdly, it will help people to see your relevance also in their life. It will help people to see your relevance in their life because of people most likely will follow only those that they know will lead them somewhere or will lead them into achieving their own personal goal or objective. So as a self-leader, this attribute needs to be seen in you for people to know that there is somewhere you are taking them to that is relevant to their own life purpose. So I believe with this few points of mine, I have not been able to confuse you, but to convince you that self-leadership is a basic important requirement for you to become a great leader and for you to successfully lead others because of it starts with you becoming that blueprint that will that other leaders will follow into actualizing and realizing their life purpose but you as an aspiring leader needs to first and foremost discover your life purpose and that will construct and form your area of leadership. So thank you very much for your time and for listening. I will now hand over to our anchor as we hope to have a brief session for questions so that we can get our extra and not miss out of it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, sir. We celebrate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for enlightening us more self leadership. Wow. I hope we are all together, everybody. Okay, say something that a self leader is someone who have discovered his essence of existence. So if you are here, you have not discovered your essence of existence. You have to check yourself again as a leader for you to lead effectively. Okay, please, if you have questions because of our time, please signify, let us know question. Question. Okay. Hello, Hello. Greetings to you all. Good evening. You're welcome. Hello, you can Hello, speak. Can... Hello, we can hear you. The question by um, Shalom Afolagboye okay. is asking, sir, how can you be disciplined as a self leader? How All can right. you be disciplined as a self leader? Okay, I get you loud and clear. All right, like I said earlier, that a self leader, when it has to do with discipline, is that you need to understand that discipline has to do with your priorities in life. It has to do with your priorities. Everyone needs to have priorities in life. What are priorities? What those things that are important for you to actualize your goals? Priorities are more like your tools, the tools you need to actualize your goal. For instance, you head to the market because of you have intention to prepare fried rice, there are ingredients that are uniquely designed and made for fried rice. When you get to the market, you will see several other ingredients. As a matter of fact, you will see things that don't have any correlation with fried rice. Now, discipline. Discipline will help you to prioritize, to know that I, am, I have come to this market to get this, this, and this, and not that and that. So discipline has to do with you first and foremost understanding your purpose and then discovering the things that you need which are your priorities liking to your tools that you need in order to bring about the actualization of your life purpose and i said earlier that there are there are there are there are things you need to discipline yourself on you need to discipline yourself on your appetite you need to discipline yourself on your appeal you need to also discipline yourself on your access. All you need to do is to understand the consequence, which is the success and failure of your life purpose. Once you understand this, it will constrain you to be disciplined. It will constrain you to know what to say yes to and what to say no to, because of you know that by judging this particular action, if you choose to say yes to it, it can hamper your chances of being successful as a self-leader and or it can give you an edge in becoming a self-leader. So it's all about prioritizing. Once you understand your purpose, you prioritize, it will form your discipline. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, we have another question from Bing Pei. So you can purpose them from what one loves to do or have passion for? All right, thank you for that question. Yes, purpose can stem from what you are passionate about, from what you love to do. That is, a, that, those are actually channels through which, or indicators, let me use the, this word, they are indicators that can point you to your purpose. But the, most excellent or precise way of discovering your purpose is to look Godward, is to look Godward, because you can love doing something, and yet that is not your life purpose. You can love thinking, and yet it's not your life purpose. 
You can love sports like a lot of us do. We love sports. We sacrifice our time. We commit ourselves to it. But yet, it is not your life purpose. You are just passionate about it. You just enjoy it. So it does not necessarily mean that that is your life purpose, but it can be an indicator. It can be an indicator to your life purpose. But the most excellent way to discover your life purpose is to seek the wisdom and understanding from God, the one who created you. He has the perfect blueprint for your life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Okay, after this, I think that's done. Okay, so uh, from Funke Adams, say, please, what is the first two points on the requirement of self-leadership? She said she came in late. What is what? That's a... What is the first Hello? two points? Hello, sir, can you hear me? Please. Yes. The first Hello. two points, number one is quality choice. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Yes, the first point is quality choice. And the second is discovery of life purpose. First, you need to make quality choices because of, like I said, life is driven by time, but configured by your choices. Your choices forms your own unique configuration, just like we have in our, uh, in our African or Nigerian setting where, when we have special occasions, there is something called the Ashoebi. We normally get a particular brand or pattern of clothes is gotten and distributed to several people. Now, when those ma brand of materials are given out, two things happen. Number one, you make a choice on who will be your fashion designer. And secondly, you make a choice of the style you want for yourself. So on the day of the occasion, you see several people with the same brand of clothing, but with different configuration, with different, with different styles. And that is what quality choice is all about. We all live within an allocated time frame. But the quality of your choice is what will set you apart as a self-leader. And more importantly, is for you to discover what is your life purpose. It will affect your discipline, your priorities, and also your choices. Because of the, the discovery of your life purpose will, 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 will create a desire within you to ask achieve something that will both be of benefit to yourself and to others. I hope that, that's, that's clear. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Can you hear you? All right. I, I okay. have, have concluded on that, on that okay. question. Thank you so much. Please, everyone, before you go, please, um, the attendant link is on the chat box. Please fill the attendant before you go, please. Very, 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 very important. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for enlightening us more on self-leadership. Thank you. And Thank you for having me. Very soon, you will see the results of what you taught, what you taught us tonight. Thank you so much. Please, I need two or three people to just tell us what he or she will be taking home from tonight's section. Two or three people. If you can omit yourself, it should be good. For me, what I'm taking home tonight is great leader is someone who has successfully lead themselves. I don't know about you. What will you be taking home tonight from tonight's session? At least a lot has been said about self-leadership. Okay. Mm -hmm. Someone say life is driven mm -hmm. by time, but configured by your choices. Mm -hmm. Yes, humanity is Okay. Think Mr. Lawrence, I think you are saying something. I was about to say the same thing that life is configured 
life life is driven by time, but it's configured by choices. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I want to say something. Okay, we can hear you can, can speak. Okay, my take on is, humility it is like a pillar in the form of a string. And humility is also a magnet that attracts people to you. And also, it will help people to see your relevance in their lives. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I believe everyone here, I'm sure you are, you are going home with something. I believe everyone here is going home with a word, with two words about self-leadership. And please, if you think that you are believing well, and Hello, what, I want to say something. I to hear. Okay. Please talk. Hello, you can talk. You can talk, sir. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Hello, we can hear you. Okay. The network is not okay tonight, but I believe mm -hmm. tomorrow the network will still be more better. So we have come to the end of tonight's section. Please kindly fill the attendance through the link, please indicate that you are available tonight. Please bring someone, don't come alone tomorrow. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones that something is going on in Young Leaders Academic and tomorrow will be better than today. So thank you so much for joining tonight. God bless you. Bye.
Elizabeth, do you need something? Thank you. 